Statement begins. I never really loved the digging. Too much like hard work, I always used to say, and I'm not a young man anymore. So generally, if the finds aren't near enough the surface for me to just pick them up, I'll leave them be. Sometimes, though, you just can't help yourself. You need to know what's under there. So you get down on your knees and dig, dig, dig. Last Saturday was like that. I hadn't thought it would be, really. Uh, my knees had been acting up all week because of the damp, and I was mainly going out for the walk rather than looking for any particular finds. To be honest, I was in two minds about taking the metal detector at all. It's not exactly a lightweight piece of equipment. Back when I lived in London, I always used to do mudlarking down the Thames, wandering through the low tide with nothing but a bag, my eyes and a pair of thick gloves. I miss those days, without the weight of the detector, without the need to dig. I don't even know why I took it. In the end, that stretch of beach is hardly virgin territory for hobbyists like me, and it's usually been picked perfectly clean, so you can imagine my surprise when I started to pick something up just before Smeaton's Pier. It was almost dark by this point, and the cool salt air of St Ives Harbour blew a fine spray of sand against my cheeks. It stung slightly, but not in an unpleasant way. Bracing, I think the word is. It was peaceful, quiet, and I was lost in my own thoughts, staring out over the darkening ocean, when the metal detector interrupted, breaking my trance. I pulled out my little torch and shone it at the spot, looking for the telltale glint. But there was nothing but sand. Whatever it was must have been buried. I was debating with myself whether to leave it be when the detector barked again, more insistently. I hadn't found anything else that day, so I sighed, pulled out my small metal spade out of my bag, and started to dig. It was only a minute or two before I saw it. A end of gold-plated metal amid the coarser gold of the sand. A watch. The face was cracked down the middle, and the hands were frozen at 419. But other than that, it seemed to be in rather good condition. Not a bad little find, I remember thinking, as I started to clean the sand from around it. And uncover the wrist it was still attached to. I think I screamed. I must have cried out in some way, but nobody heard me, so there was no one to hear but me. I played away a bit more sand, just to be sure of what I was seeing, and revealed a stiff, unmoving hand. The flesh was icy cold and discoloured, so I was certain its owner must be dead, but it didn't appear to have begun decomposing. I lowered myself slowly to the ground, trying to collect my thoughts, considering the thing I had just discovered with my clumsy, reckless digging. I wanted to call the police immediately, but I don't have a mobile phone and it would a little bit of a walk to the nearest phone box. My legs wouldn't stop shaking when I tried to stand up, so I sat there for a while, my torch shining on that lifeless hand, trying to compose myself enough to go get help. It was not thing, that hand. The fingers were bent and bloody, and the nails had been chipped and broken. From the looks of it, the damage had happened before its owner had passed away. And I noticed something else in the sand next to it. Something protruding, ever so slightly, from the sand I'd already disturbed. It didn't seem to be part of the body, and I found myself reaching over to try and pull it up. It slipped out of the sand easily, eagerly even, and I didn't even need to dig. It was a book, the cloth of the cover had worn away, and it was still wet from the sea water that covered the area of high tide. I expected it to be a useless lump of wet paper mush, fused together and unreadable, but when I pulled it open, the pages came apart easily. There was a label at the very front, but the ink had run, and I had no idea what it might have said. So I turned to the first page. It was very strange. It was just the one word, solid capital letters, in a small, neat typeface at the very centre of the page. 